How's it going, everybody? CityZilla here in our lovely city of Zillawood. And we are going to be working on a memorial today for all the disasters that hit our city and all the lives lost. And, and I think it's just a really good time for us to do something for the city. And so let's go ahead and jump right in. And so what we did on the last episode was build out this little meteor park with these rocks. Well, I ended up adding in just this little monorail station to kind of complete this area. Um, just because it, it provides access and the monorail was already down here. So we already had the line. It was just... The station was a little further down and it had gotten destroyed by the meteor. And so what I'm thinking with this area is I want to put in the disaster memorial, the one that we had gotten for basically doing all the disasters. Yeah, this guy. And so what I'm thinking is we're going to put it somewhere in here and then I want to do a nature reserve around the outside. I think that would just look really cool. And then it would provide kind of a way for people to go camping or to just look into the crater and I think it would be a nice way to kind of memorialize the area and it looks like this is a little off so I'm just going to shift this over just a smidge maybe yeah, it was probably a smidge and a half but nothing too crazy and so I am going to go in and paint this as a park area oh it actually looks like it already is so it looks like I already did that and so I already painted it in as a park area just because I, I knew that I kind of wanted to play around with this. And so we are going to come into our parks and go over to nature reserve. And the reason I'm doing the nature reserve rather than just the regular park is because I think having camping out here would just be really cool. And so we're going to put an entrance right there and then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. And then I want to choose the nature reserve path with lights because I feel like lights are going to be uh, pretty important. You know, I'm, I guess they're not all important, but uh, be an important feature. And then I think I would prefer this to be a little more even. And so I think I'm going to, even though it does put it off with this guy, um, I think it would be nice for it to be even. Though I, I do wish this was just shifted over a little more because it's not lined up with the monorail either. I think this whole area is a little shifted. Like you can see this just isn't as curved as this side. And so I think they didn't, they didn't line up properly with the airport. And so not a huge deal. Um, and so I do want to go in here and I think we're going to upgrade this path all the way around. And so I'm going to turn off collision to do that just so that we don't lose any of our, uh, any of our fence or our trees. And because it is the actual park path, it does smoothen it out. And so this is actually a much nicer path now. Um, and it would be a little safer Though I don't know how realistic it is. I think having it the way it was before was probably more realistic, but um, it's all right. And then what I'm thinking is we will add on just a couple entrances, probably on either side like that. And I think that's, that's probably good. And we are going to come through and actually decorate it all. So we're going to delete these guys. And so what I'm thinking is of having a curved path go all the way around I think it would just be really nice if we could get something that would curve around you know what that looks pretty good I know it's not perfect I definitely wish it was uh You know, I'm going to try and use the network multi-tool with this because I think we can just get a better circle around this, though I I know that the crater is probably not already like perfectly circular, but I think if we did like this to this. Woo, I mean, that could be cool. I don't I don't know how. I think that might be just a little too big. I'm not sure why it's doing it that big. That's really crazy. That seems a, a little out of control. <laughs> I guess um, this is just the recommended path for this because uh, it, it doesn't want to go smaller. That's really crazy. 
Maybe if we curve these in just a smidge. Okay, so I think that's probably about as good as we're going to get, though I'm going to shift this up just a smidge more, see if I can get that side to be just a little wider. But I think that's pretty good. We're just going to go ahead and hit enter. I know it's not perfect, but it definitely looks a little better than it did before, and so I think that is good. I'm going to just shift this guy over there. Yeah, there we go. And so we got a pretty good circle. Um, I know it's a little wider on this side, but it's not much. And so it would, would look good. And so what I want to do is go down here, since we have everything unlocked, I want to create a nice little bouldering area first, um, just because I think it would be really cool to have and it would be nice to see. And so I think we're going to do one on either side. And then what we're going to do as well is actually kind of decorate it up with some more rocks. Um, just to kind of fill in the area to make it look uh, make it look cool. Yeah, there we go. Nothing too crazy. Um, I definitely was kind of hoping to get some of the bigger ones in, but because of this, the circle's diameter, it is a little hard. It's uh, on the small side, which is okay. I think it looks good, and so I, I still think it's a win, even though um, it is a little bit smaller. And because it is smaller, we obviously can't fit in a lot of these guys, though I do want to do, so the hunting cabin, we will do like this. We'll do right next to the bouldering. And then I think we're going to do the smaller guys. We'll do one, two, three on either side, just because a lot of times when you go into places like this, the cabins are right in the front. And then we will do tent camping in the back. And I want to add in a couple of these towers but we're going to put them on the actual ring of the crater so that people kind of walking around would be able to get up in the towers and maybe look in or uh, around. I think they add a nice feature, especially how tall they are. And then we are going to end up putting trees in here too, and so it's going to kind of complete the whole look. I do want to do now some, some tent sites, and so I think we will do one of these, so lean-to shelter on either side. And then we will do a couple tents. So we'll go like that, and we'll go like that, and we'll go like that, just because we can, even though it's probably unrealistic that you have one of each kind kind of right next to it. And we could even do um, little in inroads, like uh, maybe tent sites. Like maybe uh, that could be interesting. Let's see how it looks. Uh, Originally, I wasn't planning on doing any more roads in here, but I, th I think it may mess up our circle. Oh, you know what? I think that looks pretty good, and this is definitely what you see with camping. Um, just because it creates more of a like an individualized space for people. And there you go. And so we'll go back in here and delete these guys. And then that way, like if a family came and they wanted to go camping, um, they could be down their own sector and you guys have seen this before with some of my other uh, nature reserve builds and it's pretty common for me to uh, do these it's kind of funny because I am um, we spend a lot of time in campgrounds and RV parks and stuff and so I have quite a bit of experience with all this I love camping I think camping is great you know I'm going out and spending time with the family or even if you go solo it's, it's still really enjoyable um, and so I do want to put in some of these bigger guys. Um, so we have the tent camping site number one, but then we have the, oh wait, is that number two? Yeah, tent camping site number one. Yeah, oh, and then camping site number one. So I think the camping site is the really big one. So I think we will try to make this one like a cross. So we'll go like right there. And then maybe we'll do one of each of these on the side just so that they could be a little closer to the bouldering. And I think that's probably good right there. I, I really don't want to go too crazy with this. Um, 
Yeah, I think that's good. And then what we're going to do is just do a little uh, little trick. I mean, it's kind of cheating, but it works really well. I'm just going to use the Move It mod to um, copy all these and then make sure that we do have collision on and everything and everything's good because I don't want to just place a bunch of trees on top of everything. Um, and we're just going to fill this guy in. And I want it to be really dense like that. This is, you know, a forest, and so this would be a, an extremely dense tree area. And it just kind of make like, fills in the whole vibe for camping. Um, and these are a little more open than I probably would have liked, but I think it's okay. And I think that looks pretty good right there. Um, I like the look of it, and the only thing left we have to do is to kind of decorate up this front. And so this would be the main entrance to um, the crater area, and so I would want to keep it open. But I do want to just put in a couple trees just to kind of clean it up a little bit. It would be one of the first things that you saw walking up to this area. Um, but we don't want to overdo it as uh, you, it would kind of block the view of the crater. And so I think we're just going to do a couple of these guys since we uh, did these in the park that's just surrounding this. Or just on the opposite side of this. And then for this guy, what I think we're going to do is fill it in with foliage. And then pick a nice tree. So let's look at what we have in this area. So we have those big orange ones. We have the autumn ones that we just placed. We have a ton of these smaller circular trees that we did for this park. We have a really big path, which kind of looks weird, but it's just because of the monorail. And so... We have the compers. We could just do some of the compers. I think that could look good. But we could also do some of these red guys. Did I? Yeah, there's not a whole lot of red trees in this area. And so maybe it could be... I think it would be more dramatic. And especially for this area, a, a lot of people lost their lives with um, everything that happened. And so I think this would be a nice touch for the area. And then we'll just go ahead and do that. And you know what? I think that looks pretty good. We could connect up a path for these two, but I kind of want this to be a free area for people to just come to the memorial. And then if they want to go see the crater and everything, this would be more of a paid experience. And so I think that's good. We're going to do celebration and then the recycle garbage. Um, and then we'll do an advertising campaign just because why not? But now they'll do a fireworks celebration every night, which will be really nice. And then there's still a lot of amenities in the area, like hotels and everything. And then with our uh, monorail access, it would really provide a lot of a lot of availability, which we can go ahead and look at that. Um, but I think this area looks good. Go ahead and let me know in the comments what you guys think of this. Um, let's try to figure out a good name for this area. We could name it just like Comet Memorial right now. It's Birch Heights. Um, but if you guys think of anything cool, just let me know. Um, and then we're going to look at our transportation a little bit right now. And so I want to jump into the monorails and look at what we have going. And so I did kind of play around with this a little bit just because when I deleted this guy, I noticed that our lines were a little haphazard. So we actually have two lines over here, or I think even three, because this guy connects all the way up over here. So this is... And the orange line and the green line. So the green line goes... Okay, so the green line goes right, right there. The orange line goes left. And then the yellow line goes up here. Okay. So yellow line goes from this side all the way over here, curves around, and then ends over here, kind of by our tech district. Well, then our orange line goes from here all the way over here to our little mini transit hub over in our residential area with the bus and the metro and everything. Well, then this guy has a split and there's a green line that runs from here all the way over to our... Uh, ooh, kind of bounced around. So coming from here all the way over to our Art Deco district. And the reason we did that is just because I wanted to have... Um, monorails the station on either side over here and i was just having a hard time trying to get it to click right and so i got it figured out and uh, we do have both sides being used our monorails never really kind of exploded to the point where a lot of people were using them and i think just because we have such a good metro uh setup and we even have like a metro station right here and our metro is just really populated and so i do want to look at how many trains we have though and see if we need to adjust anything so is the green line 
So right now we have three and we're running at a hundred percent car trip saved, which is actually pretty good. Um, I don't have, I don't play with parking AI. And so that is the real car trip saved. Um, yellow, we have five and a hundred percent, which is still pretty good. That's fantastic. And so what was it? Orange. And this one's four as well. I don't, so I don't see any crazy amounts of people waiting. And so I think that's probably good. But while we're at it, let's go ahead and just look at our other lines. Cause I do think we have some kind of pockets that we could fill in with some coverage. And so like, um, I'm thinking buses. So right now for bus lines, we have, so we have a yellow one and a red one. So we have this red one that goes over here and services this whole area. Then we have a yellow one that comes down here. Well, all we have over here is tram, but it does look like the tram actually comes up here. And so I don't know if we would need to service that with a bus, but this area over here actually doesn't have anything. And so I think it would be good for us to at least connect it up to the, up to the bus station so that if anybody over here needed to get out of here, they wouldn't have to uh, go out of their way. And so we'll go like that and we'll just come back over here. And then this way, if anybody's working over here as well, they can just get over to the station or out of the city or whatever they needed to do pretty quickly. And then we do have train access over here, but we don't have, so the train comes all the way down here and goes to our multi-platform end station. I think it might be smart to just add a little bus express route over there as well. So we're only going to do a couple stops on this and it's going to be right on the main street. And the reason for this is to just uh, provide that express route for people. So if they want to get over here for some reason or hop on the monorail or the metro, they can because we, we don't have any metro over here. Though it does look like we could easily extend this or even our broken line, we could extend over here. Um, but the whole point of this area was to be more of a rural look. And so having the the train station like that, that's kind of funny. Our, our offices have definitely boomed. This isn't really a rural uh, kind of area anymore. <laughs> I guess I didn't put any uh, high-rise bands. That's funny. I, I haven't really looked over here in a little bit. And so that's funny to see that. Um, and so let's look at our other guys. So that was bus. And I think, you know, after that, so we got this area covered. So now we got that area and that area. This area, I mean, most of our areas are pretty well serviced. Um, this has got a metro, which comes down here. I thought we had put in a separate line over there. Oh, we did. So we have it going to the school as well. Um, and if we wanted to, we could actually connect this up the other direction and have it meet up with this transit hub. I actually think that could be smart um, just because this is a really big population area and then it would kind of easily connect both schools. Um, but I think kind of mingling that in right now might be a little difficult because we would need to come out this side. Um, we got the blue line coming up there and we got the red line going straight across. We got this line looping around. So maybe we could, I kind of played around with this already and we would have to have this move up really fast. And I think because these are so close, it's just not super realistic. This would definitely be a line that would just terminate right there. Um, unless this was a little bit higher. And so I think that's a missed opportunity, but this area is pretty well serviced. Um, but let's go ahead and look at our uh, buses again and see about those two new lines and see how many buses, because especially with it being an express line, there's a good chance that it's going to yeah, give it 18 buses. And so I really don't think 18 buses is going to be necessary. And it's just going to congest up our roads a little bit. I think once this gets going, it's just going to be... A few people, though, I mean, there's 31. It's, I mean, not a lot, but there's some people waiting to hop on it. I kind of expected this area to be um, in need of something like that. So this one's got 16, and there's no bus service over here, but it looks like still the same, only 28. So I'm going to drop this one down to 10 as well. We can always come back and raise this up. Raise this up. Okay, so I think our buses are doing pretty good. Um... 
I kind of ran through the rest of them and there really wasn't any big changes and so I did want to jump over to our metro um, just because I think a lot of these do require a little more shifting and so like you can even see with this one it's got 14 and this is one of our main lines this is the line that comes from our new center this is actually the busiest one it was our busiest this is why we did the loop um, so it goes from the station in our in our university to the glass box station over here to our elevated station over to our little mini transit hub all the way down to our sunken transit terminal and as you can see i did have to bump this up multiple times because there was just so many people using it and it's kind of funny we actually were at a much higher level it was in the thousands but it looks like it's only at about a thousand right now which is still pretty high but um, some of these trains are actually on the low side, so I think we could drop this down to 12 and be okay with it. But we'll see, because um, I, I did end up bumping those up, and so what I'm hoping, though, is that by having less trains, the trains actually won't have to wait at the stops. And so, But we'll see. That could end up being a mistake, because I think, too, what's happening is people who go through here for some reason this just keeps getting bumped back up more people use it if it's less and so I'm surprised our traffic's not too bad right here um, it's actually not terrible right now but so hopefully more people will start using this now that it's a little cheaper I didn't realize that that was so high because these people feed directly into um, how many people utilize these stops. I mean, there's, you know, quite a bit. It's just not a ton. Um, but I think it's okay. I think we're doing pretty good. And so let's go back. And bam, bam, metro. And so let's look at this guy, blue. So 10. I mean, these aren't bad. There's people at the stops. But I think we could get away with 8. For some reason, people just seem to be using our, our metros a little less than they were, though there's still quite a few people using them. So this is our green line, the one from the massive uh, residential area. And we had bumped this up because of how many people were using it. I think there's still, uh, there was a lot of people using this. There's just tons of people walking. I mean, there's still quite a bit of people from this neighborhood. So everybody within the neighborhood is basically just walking over here since we had kind of designed it to have all these walking paths so people can just walk all the way through the neighborhood. It's actually really great. Um, I think our big mistake with this was just uh, the designing of these. I kind of wish we had added in a little more features, though. It does look like we have a pretty big fire over here. Um, I don't know what's happening, but it does look like our fire department is taking care of it and luckily there's a large body of water here so they can put it out and so let's go back to that line all right so you know six it's not bad some of these are on the low side but it does look like they are not a lot of people are waiting a long time and so that that's definitely a positive okay and so let's look at our next one looks like the orange line this is the one that goes to our uh, theme park area, and it looks like you know three's probably good. We could probably even get away with two on this one, um, but by having three, it makes it so that there's pretty much one always coming, and people don't really have to wait here. And so I think we're just going to keep it at that. Though we probably could drop that down to two. It's just the one train's not a huge deal for us, and so so that was that one right there. Let's go over to our gray line which is our line that just comes over here and then uh, goes straight to our station right there and then comes down to our sunken station. And so this has got four. It's not super utilized, though these trains are about, I mean, a quarter full or a third full. And so I think having four is probably good. We got 87% car trip saved, which isn't bad. And again, only the one train isn't going to make a huge difference in cost. And so by having that, it's a little bit better. And so this one right here, we have four. They're about half full. It does look like they do tend to fill up fast. This is literally just an express between stations. So this goes straight from our sunken station all the way to our custom sunken station over here, which was the elevated metro. And as you can see, some of these do end up pretty high. We do have some... Uh, points of interest over here the gateway arch and then the space elevator 
as well as the academic library and the school. And so I think that's probably good because it does provide access to our underground tram network and a lot of other amenities that are good to have good access to. And so let's go ahead and look at our orange one. So our orange one is one of our original ones, just comes from our sunken over to a kind of a low density residential over here. And we only have three. It does look like one of the stops. Yeah, it's the one in our sunken uh, station does end up getting quite a few people. And so I think three is probably good for this. We don't want to put too little of trains because then we're just going to end up having to come back and add on more trains, which is really what I don't want to do. And so this is our yellow one. Same kind of thing. It's one of our first ones. Goes from the sunken to another uh, low density residential area. This is actually in our commercial little sector right here. And so there's only two and it's 100% car trip saved. And so it looks like neither one of these get filled up super fast. And so I think that's probably good. And so which one was that? I think that was no, yellow line and so let's look at our magenta so this has got quite a few stops um i believe uh, so this is one of our first ones as well comes from our metro bus hub over here just goes lateral down our residential areas and then lands up here kind of by our theme park area and they're all pretty empty it almost looks like we may have too many stops on here with uh, access to other transit options that are maybe even a little bit better and so <clears throat> not a lot of people are utilizing this um we could just drop this down but it looks like they're pretty spaced out but maybe we'll drop this down to three because it doesn't look like it's really needed it's funny i dropped it down to three it deleted one but then put it down here we'll see if it fixes itself and so let's come back over here so that was our my purple line let's go green line so this is our newly created above ground that goes basically just over to our space elevator. But then we did provide that access over here to this residential area and to our farming industrial area. But then this goes into our end of line train station over here. And so it's got five trains and we can see that some of these are empty. And so I think we could probably drop this down to three and be good because none of these are insanely utilized and having those two trains would just be a hindrance on our tax bill. And so that was the green one. Let's go white one. So we got two, this one's pretty good. All right, so, and then our last one. So 45 passengers, not super well utilized. Um, oh, same kind of idea. One of our first ones where we just kind of have stops going through our residential areas. Some of them are higher density residential. But as you can see, these just aren't really well utilized. A lot of it is because there's really good transit options within the area. There's good walkability, uh, bikeability, and there's commercial within a short distance. And so a lot of these people probably never have a reason to jump onto the metro. And so um, let's go ahead and look at our trams now. And so trams, we've got quite a few trams. Um, none of them are crazy yet, so 300 passengers. These are our main ones that come into our little stations that we built next to our sunken transit center. Um, these ones are pretty high volume. As you can see, there's a lot of people that jump on these that are coming off. Man, what line is this? This is crazy. I guess, did, I thought we had looked at all the Metro. Oh, so that's our green one that, what the, did we mess up somewhere? Uh, something's happening with this line to where it's stopped or it's blocked itself. This is kind of weird. I wonder if it's just, uh, for some reason it's not moving. That's so interesting. I've never uh, seen this happen before. I'm guessing it's going the wrong direction. Or it's just missing this front car. It looks like it's missing this whole side. <laughs> That's so interesting. So I guess we're just going to eyes. It's, so it's going backwards, though. It doesn't run that way. I wonder if we messed up our line somewhere. So let's look and see. This should continue forward. I'm not really sure why that train was going backwards. Maybe we had 
Maybe it was when we dropped down the trains. For some reason, it sent the train going the opposite direction. Because, man, that messed up our whole line. There's, like, so many people waiting now. Look, there's 1,100 people waiting at the sunken transit center. This is just insane. I'm guessing because it's got to be because we dropped it down. And so it sent that train backwards on the line, which messed up everything since... The trains weren't expecting it. Normally the, the line just runs this way and then loops through our station and then comes up here. And so I just want to make sure that they are able to continue on straight. Because um, I wonder if maybe we just have an issue somewhere. Though it looks like we don't, but... I've never seen that happen where um, <clears throat> the train ends up going the wrong direction on the track. Okay, and so he should come out here and connect up right here. All right, so it looks like we don't have an issue. I'm, I'm guessing it just had to do with um, the train being decommissioned. It decided to go the wrong way on the track, and which has resulted in this huge backup of trains over here. <laughs> but... Now it um, is fixed, and so hopefully this balances out pretty quickly. Though, where did this train go? Oh, he's still there. So, yeah, we should be good. Um, though, I'm sure those people are going to be pretty upset for having to wait that long. Because this is just insane. We're probably going to lose some people. Um, but this is good. We, we did end up dropping it down, so I think that's what the problem was. Um, it's going to take a little while for these to ungroup. They do kind of wait to leave the station until the train in front of them gets a little further ahead and so but all right let's um jump back over to our trams since we uh had that little festivity happen and so this is our purple line this one runs oh so the purple and the blue are our large ones they run down our little riverfront leisure district and then they come over here to our festival area and then they loop back around to the station and so these ones are pretty heavily utilized Though it does look like these trains aren't very full, um, but it's not too much higher than the actual budget allotment, and so I think we'll leave it at 18 because we did play play with those quite a bit when we first built out the area. This one's 18 as well, because I think when festivals happen, um, they do end up getting pretty congested, and I'm pretty sure the festivals are still happening. Yeah, there's actually one happening right now. It does look like there's a dead person over here, though. We have a, yeah, a couple crematoriums, so they should be good. We don't have any traffic in this area, so should be good. Um, but yeah, they come in here, both the purple and the blue, which you can kind of see them now, and they pick up right in front of the festival area. So when this lets out, both of these get pretty full. And then our orange one is the one that comes down here to our other uh, little leisure district. And so let's go back and look at our yellow, which is the other one that runs out of this station. It just comes down the middle. And loops around down here by the two stadium or the stadium and the opera house. And it looks like it has nine, but none of them are really full. We actually have some that are empty, um, but it's only at 128%. So this isn't a huge cost for us. Um, so I think by leaving it at that, it's probably good. And so let's go over to that was our so let's come to our whites, which what is our oh, so our white ones are just the loops. So they loop around this main sector right here, this uh, main street you can kind of see, um, and they go in both directions. And so they are pretty well utilized. Um, none of the trains are full, though it does have nine and it's at 100%. So we got 86% car trip saved. So I think we're just going to keep that like that. And same with this guy. It's got nine. None of them are full, but every station pretty much has a couple people there are some stations that are empty but i don't think it's a huge concern so we're going to go to our red one which is i believe our industrial line yeah it comes over here just loops around in our industrial area and then comes back to the station i wanted to provide a little access for workers maybe and it only has four you can kind of see some of the stations are empty this one actually was jamming up our traffic for quite a bit whenever we first started i ended up having to reconfigure the roads when we were building it out so this is one of our underground ones in our uh, school area. We built the two underground um, tram stations and then it does come above ground and then loop over here next to our uh, stadiums. 
And so I, I think this one is pretty good. Yeah, so 9 at 100% with 100% um, trip saved, which is good. It's not super utilized. I really didn't anticipate those to be really busy ones, though. And so I think it's about good for what our intention was. Um, this is our original tram line. It just loops around our commercial area right here. And so, I again, I didn't plan on this one being super busy. And so I think this is probably good for what we're getting out of it. Um, because it is kind of a smaller area, it was more uh, to just serve to help people get around while they're shopping. But there is really good walkability in here, too. Like, you can see the walking paths. And then there's parking in here, too. And also a metro station. So there's really good accessibility in there. And then, so this is our orange one, which was the one that I was talking about that loops down over here. Um, and it comes through this little section. Provides some accessibility to this leisure district as well as the neighborhood. And so it doesn't look like these are very busy. We actually have an empty train. And so we already have bumped it down. It's only at 63%. But man, these ones, this is pretty empty. Why are we... So it does look like we're having some death wave issues over here too. Let's look at our crematorium usage over here. So we got one right there. We got one over there. We could put in... We could probably use... You know, it doesn't look like we have a crematorium over there. Though there is one there that can make it over. And there is one in the area. And so I'm really kind of surprised that they're having those issues. Though it is a little bit down. But let's check out that crematorium and see. So hearse is in use 7. So that means they're sending people out. And I'm not really sure why these are so small. I think when we had came back and rejiggered the road, I forgot to uh, put those in because, yeah, that's like we, we don't really have need for that small of zoning in there. But it does look like there are hearses in the area. There's one hearse right there. He's going to pick up that guy. Or maybe he already has somebody. No, it says load 10%, so I don't know where he's going, but he's picking up somebody. He might even be just coming over here, cutting through. Um, yeah, so these should upgrade a little more now because these are just kind of small for this area, this waterfront way. But I think this whole area looks really cool. Um, I like this view with the bridge and the whole downtown. This would be a nice area to come to, especially across the street from this whole tourism area. And so I think that is probably good. So we looked at buses, metro, tram, monorail. We do have one ferry line. Um, it's very underperforming. Yeah, we only have, like, so, uh, zero. Looks like this has got two people on it, one people. So we could just drop this down to two. Um, it's not in a great location up here, like right here. It's all the way down here in this park area, which I was really hoping we were going to be able to turn into something a little nicer, but we never really did anything with it. And so we, you know, we could, we could maybe just put a couple park assets down here and maybe it would be utilized a little more. Or even maybe some shops, since the boat museum is down there. Let's see if maybe we could just put a couple. I just because it's only got the boardwalk, we really. Let's see if maybe we'll we'll just put in a couple. So we'll go like that. And we'll go like that. Like that. And let's see what that does. I don't necessarily like that, but. I think it may help to revitalize this area a little bit because we're just not getting a lot of traffic down here and then um, nobody's using the ferry. So maybe by having a couple commercial zones down here, we will get just a little more people maybe utilizing our walking paths. Because whenever we did create this, I really liked the area with the, the walls and then the bridge over and we even did the trees and it just, you know, it's a really nice area. But we uh, are just not getting people going to it, so. Yeah, I don't even think anybody's really using this. I don't know if those re those commercial are going to build out either. I mean, they're down here. We'll check back on them in a little bit. Um... And so I think that's it for the episode. We did run through all of our transit. 
Yeah, we so we have a couple of train lines to you. Um, though these I don't really count as anything major. This one was just put there to provide a little relief for the transit for the stadium district right there. Um, it's only got three. It is pretty utilized. It's not crazy utilized, but it is utilized a little bit. And so, and then this one over here is our rural neighborhood train and it is a little utilized. Again, it's really underwhelming, but uh, I think it's good for what we're trying to do. And then we don't have trolleys. We don't have any sort of train. We do have a bus tour, and we we had a walking tour. I thought we did anyways. Um, our bus tour is not bad. Um, as you can see, only 23 tours. So most of these are empty, but um, I already dropped it down to 47, so it's only 20 buses, but... I think the key with the bus tours that I'd read and along with the walking tours as well is that you don't want to have them too large because then nobody rides them. And so I think that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think of the memorial. Um, I think it looks really cool. And then if you have any suggestions or tips for the buses or the metro or anything, feel free to let me know. You know, um, I look forward to being a part of the community and I will catch you on the next one. We're having a huge unhappiness wave. It looks like we just lost some sort of match.